Hello once again. So a few months ago, I unboxed a package on video that was sent by a YouTuber, a viewer and friend of the channel, and it had some really generous gifts in it, including these two video cards. Uh, one of these is an AMD Radeon R9 390, and the other one's an AMD Radeon R9 390X. And I've been planning to swap one of these cards into my main PC, which is right here. But uh, I've just been too lazy to shut the computer down, pull it out, and uh, swap the cards. But I'm, uh, I'm actually shutting down the computer today to put in this... Oh, where's the camera? Put in this zip drive. <laughs> so I figure while I'm at it, we'll uh, sw swap out these cards too. So yes, it took putting in a 20 year old zip drive to, to upgrade my video card <laughs> to an awesome card that's just been sitting here for such a long time. So we have a 390 and a 390X. Uh, you can um, uh, crossfire these cards and my motherboard is capable of that and my power supply is capable of that but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be installing both these cards and the reason is in my mind based on the research I've done there's just the be the benefits do not outweigh the downsides of cross firing two cards like this. The extra power usage, the extra heat generated and the risk of bugs or deteriorated performance in some games when it comes to cross fire. Uh, to me, it uh, it's just not worth it. So I'm only going to put in one of these cards. The more powerful of the two, the 390X, is the one we'll be installing. And I guess I'll just keep the uh, 390 as a spare. So you can have your own opinions. If you, I, I don't think you're dumb if you want to crossfire two cards. Um, there's certainly a lot of benefit um, to it. But to me, I'm not a hardcore gamer. And so... First of all, I have no use for Crossfire when one of these cards is going to give me all the power I ever need for years to come. In fact, the GTX 770 that's currently in the computer that another YouTuber generously gave to me last year, um, that's been all the power I've needed. <laughs> so I'm not a person who will gain any benefit from Crossfire. Maybe it'll render my videos a bit faster, but... On the whole, I just I just don't need it, and so I'm more concerned about compatibility rather than performance. And so I'm just going to put in one of these cards, the 390X. That's the other thing that I think kind of subconsciously kept me putting off putting in one of these cards was I felt bad for ditching the GTX 770 so soon after the GeForce uh, sent that to me very generously all the way from Australia, but. It's a fantastic card, and I'm definitely going to be keeping it as a spare, that's for sure. I might put it into another computer, not sure yet. But uh, anyway, let's uh, get started putting in one of these cards. Well done, StarTech, shipping your 3.5 inch to 5.25 inch drive bay adapter with screws that are too big and screws that are too small. <laughs> Guess I'll be using my own friggin' screws. Out with the old... And in with the new. And uh, that's a pretty nice looking card, I'll tell you what. Uh, it was a little more work to get everything in here than it should have been. That StarTech drive bay adapter is just not worth what I paid for it. It doesn't fit well. Then again, this case is weird. Because it uses these dumb plastic things instead of normal screws to put stuff in. So it's, it's partially this case's fault. So maybe not so much the drive bay adapter, but I, it took some work to get that to fit right. I had to cut a piece of uh, rubber eraser and wedge it in there so it wouldn't slide all over the place. And uh, uh, the card was pretty uh, easy to get in there. It uses one 8-pin connector and a 6-pin connector instead of just two 6-pin connectors, but luckily my power supply was already tooled for that. But uh, the connectors are also upside down from all the other video cards I've had in here. So now the power cables have this weird twist in it. And Anyway, also uh, it's <laughs> it got really dusty in this computer. It's collected a lot of dust since the last time I had it open. So what I've done is 
I have taken a, a Swiffer cloth or a knockoff Swiffer cloth and jammed it in the back of the front panel here just to serve as a bit of an air filter and hopefully that helps. And yeah, the zip drive is all plumbed in there. This motherboard does have an IDE connector on the motherboard right there and a floppy connector all on the motherboard. And uh, these two Velociraptor drives, they've been working excellent. You might recall that the reason I couldn't upgrade this video card immediately is because the DVI ports on it are DVI-D, not DVI-I, so they don't have the extra pins for passing through a VGA signal. And my second monitor here is a VGA monitor. So I've had to buy this display port to VGA adapter and hopefully it works okay. We'll find out. All right, we're ready to go. Let's see if this works or if it blows up. Oh, that's not good. Oh, okay. The first time it turned on and then just immediately turned back off. It does that sometimes. Oh, let me close this curtain behind me. Uh, we are not, oh, there we go. So it's treating that as the primary monitor because it's in the display port and it, the display port probably has preference over the DVI. Overclocking failed. Oh, it doesn't like my overclock. Oh, we'll just load the default. And then I'm going to have to figure out all my overclock settings again because what I want to do is see if it renders video faster. But I can't get a fair comparison if it does or doesn't until I have an overclock set because my last comparison was done with an overclock set, if I remember correctly. So for some reason my hard drive light is solid on. And the computer just shut right off. Uh-oh. And now it's booting back up. Okay, something really strange is going on. Did making use of the IDE port, like, disable the RAID array? The fan's running at full speed now, because that's how the default BIOS, that's what the default BIOS setting is. Man, every time I change something in this computer, it just throws up. It just makes such a stink about it. Oh! 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 Okay, I've got to figure something out here. An accessible boot device. Oh, wonderful. Alright, I'm gonna try and figure this thing out and then we'll come back. Okay, so I reconfigured the bio settings, got it to boot up, but now we have this <laughs> really shitty effed up image on my main monitor. Uh, I wonder if that's a driver thing or is the DVI port on this card physically broken? I checked the connection. The connection's fine. Is it the cable on the monitor end? I would think I'd be smart enough to have it screwed in. No, it's not the cable on the monitor end. Maybe I'll try. There's two DVIs on the card. Maybe I'll try switching to the... Uh, other DVI. Okay, it works. Uh, I was wrong. It was a monitor connection issue, but not for the reason you would hope, like a bad cable or something. Um, apparently, the card end of the DVI cable coming from this monitor had a bent pin. Somehow, that happened when I pulled it out of the old card. I don't know how. But uh, when I plugged it into the new card, um, instead of the bent pin just stopping it from going in, it just obliterated the plastic separator on the, between the pins on the card and then just effed up the pins. So I tried really hard with a pick to straighten out the pins and I put in the cord really gently and I screwed it in really gently and it's working now and hopefully it stays that way. Wow, I can't believe. Imagine if I had bought this card new, you know, five years ago, bought it for like $300, $400, and then did, did that to it. 
Holy cow. Although at least if it ever becomes a problem again, I think I can, I, I would assume that the DVI connectors are soldered in some standard fashion such that I can go on DigiKey and order a new female DVI connector and solder it in. But hopefully I never have to find that out. But it's working now. Let me get this sorted out again. Uh, that's a really old version of the AMD Catalyst software from 2015. I don't know if it installed that itself or if it was here from way back when I had the, uh, the HD5370 uh, or whatever it was that originally came in this computer. But I'll check and see if there's a newer version I can download. Okay, so Windows automatically installed a super old version of uh, the Catalyst drivers for some reason. But now I'm installing, I uninstalled it, now I'm installing the latest version of the Radeon Pro drivers. Which are apparently a version of the uh, AMD Adrenaline drivers that... Uh, I, I guess it's, you know, it's meant for professional use, so it's, it's guaranteed to be more stable and more compatible than, uh, than the standard drivers. I would assume perhaps you lose a little bit of performance, but like I said, I prefer stability and compatibility over performance because... Stability and compatibility seems to be a hard thing to come by in computing these days, especially in the Windows 10 era. So I'm going to install the Pro drivers here. And we'll see how it works, and if it all works well, then I'll retune my overclock. And then we'll do some benchmark testing. Alright, it's a few hours later. I took some time to uh, redo my overclocking. Make sure everything was good. I think I have it tuned in. Uh, we're running at 3.75 gigahertz with a turbo of up to 3.95 gigahertz. And you might remember that when I originally swapped the i7-950 that was originally in this computer out for the Xeon E5645 that's in it now, one benchmark we used was how fast can it render one minute of video, the type of video that I uh, upload onto YouTube. Standard definition, well it's actually rendered at 960 by 720 resolution at 60 frames per second. And in that video we found in the configuration that this computer has now, uh, bef but before the new video card I put in, it rendered one minute of video in one minute and 13 seconds. Well, I've done that again and how fast does it render a minute of video now? one minute and 13 seconds that did not change at all so evidently sony vegas isn't make taking advantage of the video card um it says that it is it, you know you go into the settings and it sees the video card and it sees the the uh ati amd you know rendering compatibility that it can take advantage of but it doesn't use it it must be the particular format i render my videos in it just can't take advantage of it so no improvement there but let's see how passmark performance test fares now here's our numbers from last time with the gtx 770 let's see how it works now the direct x9 going super fast uh, 160 frames per second I can actually hear the fans in the video card ramping up. It's the first time I've heard the fans in the video card. It's pretty quiet fans in it. There's the DirectX 10, also very fast. 170 frames I saw at one point. The DirectX 11. So, oh, it's doing 100, 180 frames a second on that one. DirectX 12 looking pretty good. 90 frames a second. I always enjoy this one because you can hear the motherboard and the sound hardware squealing <laughs> when it does it. Okay, pardon my lapel mic taking a dump. 
But uh, take a look at this. Wow, our main score bumped up quite a bit. That's from 2800. Our CPU mark dropped a little bit. Whatever. 2D graphics went up a little bit. And 3D graphics took a huge jump. That's up from 5600. Wow, 59th percentile. Memory mark went down a little bit, and disk mark stayed about the same. So we once again lost uh, scores in a couple of places. Beats me why. Could be the overclocking, could be something else, whatever. But uh, holy cow, we've got a lot of graphics power, and uh, our main score has improved quite a lot. And you know, that GTX 770, that was already more power than I knew what to do with, but... Here's where we are now. <laughs> I'm not sure how it could uh, how it could get better. Um, we haven't seemed to hit the limit of our 11 year old motherboard yet. <laughs> I don't know where that I don't know where that limit would be, but there you go. So that's upgrading the video card in the main PC from a NVIDIA GTX 770 to an AMD Radeon R9 390X. And this was a generous gift from YouTube user 93Shadow. So thank you so much, 93Shadow. I uh, really appreciate it. What a what an excellent gift. And, and he gave me two of them, so I get a spare one here, I guess. In case something ever happens to this card. So there you go. How could I almost forget to check the zip drive? Let's see, where is it going to pop up? Oh, I hear the drive initialized. Oh, there we go. Zip drive works. How about that? I've got this crazy computer with a floppy drive and a zip drive. <laughs>